uh, one of my followers, subscribers, or or um, or commenters, uh, whatever you want to call the individual. Um, uh, sorry, I can't remember uh, you, uh, your name, but uh, basically, uh, someone uh, commented on my uh, previous video uh, or one of my previous videos about a Duo R and and the fact that I said I was going to RGB mod it and. And one individual said, "Could you show how you're going to do that on on a video?" Um, and and I said, "Oh, that's a good idea. I'll uh, I'll consider in doing that." So I'm going to start that process off. I'm not sure where I'll get with this or what this ends up with because this isn't something I'm going to be do, uh, be doing in one night. I suspect it will take me a few nights or a, or a few hours to do it. Um, and I'll basically uh, fit it in as and when I've got time. But but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert my uh, PC Engine Duo R to RGB. And to enable me to do that, I'm going to have to build an RGB amp and I'm going to have to build an appropriate uh, RGB SCART cable up. So I've been out today, I've brought some mods and sods. I had various parts anyway, essentially uh, with the RGB amp, but the RGB amp consists of uh, some resistors which I already had consists of some uh, transistors uh, which I already had consists of some capacitors which I already had uh, all fully prepared and a bit of circuit board uh, PCB which again I already had so I will be building those up into an appropriate RGB uh, amplifier circuit which I need to insert into the uh, Duo R. As regards to getting the RGB signal out the Duo R I've bought a couple of uh, new DIN uh, connectors if you see that that's basically an 8 DIN socket um, it's not the one I really wanted because of the mounting method of this so I'm gonna have to think slightly intelligently or slightly outside the box as regards to how I'm going to mount this um, not quite sure at the moment because I haven't pulled the GIR out to see where I can mount it but it's not really an issue at the moment I'm not going to worry too much about it it'll go somewhere I'll fit it somewhere and I'll find the most or the best or easiest uh, place for that that DIN socket to go uh, plug it into the DIN socket I need a DIN plug which I've got here so this is another um, sorry this is an 8 pin DIN plug to go into the 8 pin DIN socket so that will carry all the all these various uh, signals I need to carry out into my SCART lead um, I'm pretty sure I've got various SCART leads at home um, uh, but I didn't really want to risk it I didn't want to start this and find out I hadn't got one. I'm pretty sure I've got a load of SCART leads thinking, hanging around everywhere. But anyway, this cost me £4.99. It was a bit of a no-brainer, to be honest, because unless I've already got one, which, which to be fair, I'm pretty sure I am, but but this is a lead that basically I'm going to hack up. So I'm just going to try and open this up with one hand. Right, so... Basically, or effectively, this is a SCART to SCART lead, and it's all, um, it's been wired uh, 21 pin to 21 pin. So there's two SCART leads there, uh, two uh, male SCART leads, sorry, two male SCART connectors, uh, and, and there, and actually this lead as well actually has phonos built into it, so it actually uh, does break out for audio, which I'm not interested in for this, but it was £4.99 from that. Um, uh, from Maplin and they had it there whilst I was there now if I've got to build this it would cost me more than 4 99 I suspect to buy to buy a SCART uh, connector and some decent quality uh, cabling so I thought sod it I'll buy this for 4 99 uh, the SCART end's already going to be uh, soldered so I'm going to worry about that so all I've got to do is is break the other end off find out what the um, uh, what the pin configuration is as regards to the wiring and wire that straight into my my DIN socket or my DIN uh, connector here my DIN sorry my DIN plug even as I need to um, 
sorry, or as properly as I need to, and whatever case that may be, and we can go into that uh, further on in the video. But, so, here's all the bits and bobs. So I'm going to, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is, is to actually build the RGB sync amp. So I'll show you some of that next. Right, I've actually built the uh, RGB amp now, which was um, a slightly quicker process than what I thought it would uh, take to build it. Um, I have done a few of them now, so it's a bit easier to do nowadays uh, than what it was the first one I did. But it is uh, basically a very simple circuit. And I think one thing to remember about the uh, soldering process is that you know don't be afraid uh, to give it a go. And and I'm not the best solder in the world. I don't do it enough to be absolutely mint at, at soldering. But you know, when you first start doing soldering, and it is all about practice, is is that you'll find yourself what I call um, uh, bird shit soldering, which is where you just get lumps and bumps everywhere, and it 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 just looks absolutely nasty. But with practice and practice, um, uh, you'll get a fairly neat job. So it it's. And this specific uh, circuit is really easy uh, to build, uh, in essence. You know, you've got your, uh, your transistors, uh, your capacitors, and your resistors there. I haven't put any wires on this coming off this, but basically that stem there, that'll be a plus. So I'll look for a plus off there, but but effectively I've got to, I've got to give this input on here and also outputs. I'll give it an input and I'll get an output on the RGB lines and I've got to feed it power on the ground but but effectively that's the uh, that's the little uh, amp uh, circuit uh, it doesn't look much and it isn't much in essence but it does a fair amount as regards to uh, the difference it makes to the video signal so I just thought I'd show you that specifically as regards to what that amp circuit looks like, like I said, it's very easy to build. Um, it's not a major issue, but but don't be afraid, guys, of building something like this because it is uh, fairly easy. Um, it might not look easy when you first look. You think, Jesus, you, you know, how do I know how to do that? And you know, we just got to try, guys. And it's not. It it really isn't difficult. So I would suggest you have a go if you feel um, uh, fit enough and brave enough. You shouldn't actually do any damage to your PC engine or any device that you're going to connect this amp to if you wire it incorrectly, it just won't work effectively. Um, so yeah, so that's the RGB amp and we'll go on to the next part now. Um, something that's probably overlooked in a number of videos as regards to uh, consoles is, is that, and in fact the GIR is no different, is that the uh, the screws that hold uh, the duo R together aren't aren't normal screws, um, and I'm not sure you're going to be able to focus effectively on that. But basically, that's a one, two, three, four, five, six uh, sided uh, security bit. Um, I actually went out some time ago and bought a full uh, security bit set, and I haven't come across a bit that I haven't got. Uh, security bit that I haven't got a bit for after buying this kit. This was bought, I think I bought this from Maplin's um, uh, General Electrical um, uh, store and um, and these sorts of uh, bits uh, come in um, sort of massive use especially for uh, undoing consoles and things to do with arcade cabs etc to get all the all the hexagon and multi-hex and star hex and all sorts of different top security bits you can get but I just thought I'd just mention that that, that the GR is no different um, you can actually make out on there but but effectively you know as I've just shown you the head of the screw is a multi spline effect so you need a special bit to get into it so you really need to buy a kit like this guys because you don't want to start mashing up the heads on your um, on your screws so I just thought I'd uh, i would mentioned that along the way. Um, so effectively, what I'm doing here is I'm just taking the, I'm just taking the various um, uh, screws uh, out of the uh, base of the GR. There's actually one, two. I've just took that one out too. There's one there, three, uh, one there, four, and one there, five. Once you take those off, it should all come apart. 
Now, um, uh, the first thing you need to uh, realise about the Duo R is that it has some internal uh, cabling that's uh, connected effectively to the uh, door open close switch. So when you undo the screws, don't lift the cover straight off. If you take it from the left hand side, like this, and move it over, and we'll balance that there, hopefully it won't fall down. And you see that lead there, it's in the corner there. Basically we need to um, uh, disconnect that from the main PCB. So it should just pull off. Just oh, right, I didn't actually want to do that. So let's... <laughs> what a prat. I knew it was going to do that. So I'm just going to use a glass there just to hold that. That should give it a little bit, just while I do this with one hand. I wouldn't normally do it with one hand obviously, but this is what I'm trying to show you guys. There you go. And that's effectively took that off there, so we can get rid of the top now. Right, the actual chip that we uh, concern ourselves with, I'm just wondering what I can zoom in on here. It's this one here. It's the HU6260. Sorry, the HUC6260. And this is where we're going to um, uh, tap off from for our RGB and our sync signal. Um, it should be fairly easy to do. Um, I don't uh, anticipate any major issues, but uh, we haven't got a major amount of room there because obviously you've got to solder onto. Um, onto pins, or effectively onto the leg. Sorry, on the on the um, on one of the uh, ICs, and if you just sort of pan out, it will keep, it will put into perspective actually how small the how small the legs are. You know, it's not a um, it's not a massive amount of area, but I don't foresee it's going to be any major issue. I've got to take my time and do it. Um, and yeah, so hopefully in the next few minutes I'll have the wires soldered on. Right so this is uh, sort of part way through the uh, modification hoof um, and it looks an absolute mess at the moment. Um, <laughs> don't worry about it too much. I've basically done a dry run of, of, uh, of the connection. Uh, basically wiring uh, direct off that chip there as you can see. Uh, which was fairly straightforward, just to, uh, just have to take your time and be very uh, precise and have the right soldering tip. That is absolute key. Um, basically what I've done is, I've done a dry run and I've got it working. So the RGB mod works, so that's basically, that underneath that uh, tape is the RGB um, uh, sync booster, which you can't really see very well, but that's the, uh, the RGB uh, booster circuit, uh, the amp. And and this here was not find it. That's the original DIN socket, which is a five-pin DIN, and that was mounted up to about five minutes ago, just there. Basically, what I've done is taken that off because although I'm not going to, well, basically where that that one was, if we just quickly just put that back there, it was sort of like that. So the AV cable uh, was coming out the back there, and there's a hole already cut. Let's get the case. Uh, the hole already cut there for the sorry for the original AV cable. What I'm effectively going to do or look at doing is I've got my my new uh, eight pin uh, Dubri, and I'm effectively going to slot that in there. I'm going to use uh, some self tappers either side uh, to secure that in, so I won't have to drill anything specifically, and that should be a fairly neat, neat solution to be honest. Um, and and hopefully that will work. Now, because if we look on the other side, uh, we've got uh, that there, and I've actually had all this connected up, not like this, but I've had it connected up to uh, the PC engine, and I've made a SCAR cable, which I'll show you in a bit which plugs into there and to the TV and it all works absolutely fine and dandy which is a bonus but because that DIN socket is going to be like that I've had to remove the one that was on the back and already mounted the PCB because I won't be able to have that like that basically uh, without uh, removing the, the original one so that's what I've basically done so I'll stop there and I'll carry on 
Right, so here's the next stage of the uh, full RGB hoof. Um, I'm actually pretty pleased with this, I've got to be honest. Uh, that's my new port. So I've used uh, two nice gold coloured um, uh, self tapping screws. It is slightly on the piss, but just ignore that. Uh, I didn't quite uh, line my screw holes up correctly, uh, so you have to forgive me for that. But but that that is the new eight pin. You, you probably just see there. That's the new eight pin din, and that's on the other side of it. Oh, there we go. There. So that's all the soldering done and all the wiring. Um, I will tidy the wiring up ever so slightly, just to make it look slightly neater. So all I've got to do now, effectively, is put the CD drive back on that uh, belongs there, and um, and show you the finished article. Right. Oh yeah, baby. Right, okay, folks. So we have the finished article as regards to the uh, duo all. All connected back together again. All connected back together again. All put back together again. Either, either. Um, and we just spin the uh, console around, and we can see the new uh, AV port, the new eight-pin AV port that's on the back. So that's the RGB and stereo uh, sound coming out of that. And the only thing I didn't show you really, but there wasn't actually really much to show you. This is basically what's left of the of the uh, RGB scout lead that I bought. I chopped one of the ends off and I put the uh, round eight pin DIN plug on the end of it. And of course that that just plugs into there, uh, nice and neatly. Uh, power supply into there, joy pad into the front, and it all works. And and the picture is absolutely mint as you would expect. Um, I'm pretty chuffed with this actually because I wasn't I wasn't particularly looking forward to doing this mod if I'm being totally honest because of the uh, the need to uh, actually solder uh, directly onto the chip mount a external um, a DIN socket on the on the back of the unit and I don't I, I don't have a lot of patience uh, with things like this it's why I don't like uh, doing uh, these types of things it's not that I've got the ability I can. I do them fairly easily but I just I lose interest but I've, but I've actually took the time over this and and this is I think this is the third night now uh, that I've spent on it I've spent about an hour hour and a half each night but I've done it really slowly so I didn't want to fuck up basically and it virtually worked first time I'd got a slight uh, wiring issue on the DIN socket uh, I've got two wires crossing way around uh, corrected those and it fired up and it's been it's been fine ever since every time I've tested it it's worked fine uh, through the various stages so uh, you know guys if you take your time it is it is easy to do it's not hard to do but you've got to have patience and I don't I'm not always the best person to have patience so so here we have the uh, converted uh, duo R for um, uh, RGB I'll just quickly flash now to some CRT scanline RGB porn and I'll catch you around guys. Uh, the next video on the GOR will be when I get my new CD drive and I will show you how to fit that because that's not just a simple case of swapping the drives over. You actually, uh, you actually have to take the mechanism apart on one of them and swap it over the new drive because you only get the laser unit effectively. Uh, you don't get the whole drive so you've got to do a bit of, of chopping and changing there. And also I just want to have a, a brief update for you guys on the same video about how to tune your CD uh, drive because uh, these drives are quite notorious that they can um, uh, uh, sort of over time they lose the ability to read discs and it is a sign of them wearing but you can tune them and I've done a fair bit of research on this I've got a method that I've actually tried on this drive and it seems to have worked so I'll let you guys in on that one as well so I'll uh, switch to some I'll switch to some scanline porn and I'll catch you around guys see you later So here's just a quick video or a quick snapshot of the uh, Dua that I've just RGB modded, running in glorious RGB mode on my Sony Trinitron. See there, the glorious scan lines, nice pin sharp image. 
Oh baby! Should come back a bit there. Uh, I must admit, one thing I've noticed about this uh, particular mod uh, on the Duo R is that the uh, colours are really, really bright. I've had to turn the uh, contrast down slightly. I could possibly uh, sort that out by by uh, putting some extra components into the SCART end of the uh, of the lead just to tone it down a bit. But uh, for the purpose of this, I've just turned the uh, turn the colour down slightly. But as you see, that's a, a lovely sharp image. Hopefully, it's come up okay on there. Full scan line schnizzle. Look at that. Ooh, baby.